Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Welcome to Tuesday Night Live. It's a wonderful night to die. <laughs> yes, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Not for everybody. <laughs> there are those out there to be absent from the bodies to be present with the devil. That's why God's bringing a revival. Revival. Revelation chapter 1. Revelation chapter 1. It's the last book in the Bible. That's why it's Revelation. <laughs> it's the final revelation until we meet the Revelationer. Revelation chapter 1 and verse 4. Is everybody there? Let's speak it together. John to the seven churches which are in Asia. Grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come. And from the seven spirits who are before his throne. And from Jesus Christ, a faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, the ruler over the kings of the earth, to him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. And has made us kings and priests to his God and Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Kings and priests. And this is very powerful because when you become to realize, again, I really believe that trying to establish identity is a continuous battle. Trying to maintain identity is a continuous battle. In this, Jesus is saying right here, he's saying, listen, I've called you to be priests and kings. That is a representation of a royal family. It is royal. So, in other words, we belong to a royal eternal race, not temporary, but eternal we are a race of royalty. We are involved in a royal family. It's not a temporary one. It's an eternal one. Now, we have a lot of imitation here on earth. They're all trying to imitate the true royalty. In fact, that's what the devil tried to do. In 1 Peter chapter 2, First Peter chapter 2. I'm going to look to your neighbor and say, you're a of the royal family. You may not look like it, but you are. <laughs> See, you don't have to wear all of this foo-foo to become royal. Your garments are given by God. Your crowns are given by God. You wear crowns and you wear royal clothing and garments in an unseen realm. See, the demons see it. Demonic forces know. In fact, they fear you. That's why the battle, they got, if they can mess with your head, they can mess with your thoughts, They can decloak you. So the only thing that the powers of darkness can do is deceive you 
to disarm yourself. Does everybody get it? Because as a man thinks, so he is. In 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 9, Let's read it. But you are a what? A chosen generation, a what? A what? A what? A royal priesthood, meaning you belong to a royal family. You are a royal priest, a priesthood, a what? A holy nation. That means you are a holy race. His own special people that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. We who were once not a people, but now the people of God. Who had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Beloved, I beg you as sojourners and pilgrims abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul. Have your conduct honorable among the Gentiles that when they speak against you as evildoers they may by your good works which they observe glorify God in the day of visitation. Very important. We are a chosen royal priesthood. We are a holy nation called out of darkness into a royal family not temporary but eternal. A royal family is associated with a blood inheritance. Even in the physical realm, royalty is associated with a bloodline. Again, a royal family is associated with a blood inheritance. Must be blood related. It's a status of kings and priests and queens and family members. It's a status. In the physical world, there's a status. Of course, they have all of this foo-foo and whatever, and you got the British morons and heathens. But not, they're, they're, they're not truly a, a royal family. They're a demonic royal family. In Ephesians chapter 1, They play all the rituals and castles and, you know, it's like playing house for them. But they're not heavenly bound. <laughs> Ephesians 1 verse 3. Now, there's something important we got to grab hold of. Everyone say royalty, royalty. Loyalty, loyalty, and identity. identity. Any one of those is breached, they all become breached. Does everybody get this? Any one of these is breached, they all become breached. Loy royalty is associated with position. Royalty is associated with what? Position. Loyalty is associated with the heart. And identity is associated with destiny. When these are broke, there's a ripple effect to each one. When a person begins to lose their identity, their loyalty, and then their connection to royalty. When a person begins to lose the connection with royalty, they begin to lose connection with loyalty. 
any one of these is breached, there's a ripple effect to each and every one. In Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 3, Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with what? Every spiritual blessing where? In heavenly places. Why? Because this is a royal position. It is a royal position. Just as he chose us in him before the foundations of the world. Our little peanut brain has a hard time with that one. You mean, before he created anything, he thought about me and you. And when he thought about me and you, he chose me and you to come at a certain time. He knew exactly when you would come into this realm. Either by choice or by mistake. He knew when you would come. <laughs> at least when I was brought up, I was always told I was a mistake. You were a mistake. She stinks. I wonder why I was a maniac. Just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be what? Holy, Holy and without blame before him in love, having what? Predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will to the praise of the glory of his grace, by which he made us, what? Accepted in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace, which he made to abound toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in himself that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth in him. In him also we have obtained a what? An inheritance. Being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will, that we who first trusted Christ should be to the praise of his glory. In other words, Jesus paid the price by the bloodshed. Remember, this is blood. It's, there's a, an inheritance of blood. When you accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, before you could even be accepted, you had to be washed by the blood. That's through repentance. So we maintain our connection of royalty by maintaining a heart of purity and repentance because we don't want anything to interfere with our connection in our royal family. Does everybody get this? So you and I were... The price was paid with the shed blood. We are washed with our old blood of carnality and sin and replacing us with royal eternal blood through adoption and acceptance and giving us an inheritance. You and I were sealed with dominion and authority by the Holy Spirit. All of this is, comes together. As royalty, and as of a royal family, a holy, eternal, royal race, a kingdom of priests and kings, under a king, eternal king, you and I were washed by the blood, connected, brought in, born of the Spirit, into a bloodline of royalty. Of royalty. And in this bloodline of royalty, we were accepted and adopted. We were given an inheritance, and we were sealed with dominion and authority by the Holy Spirit. Why? Because royalty has dominion and authority. 
if it's true royalty. Matthew 26. Royalty, loyalty, and identity. We are... Royalty is a representation of positions. Loyalty is a representation of heart. And identity is a representation of destiny. Matthew 26, 47. Remember, the devil comes to what? Steal, kill, and destroy. In verse 47, And while he was still speaking, behold, Judas, one of the twelve, with a great multitude with swords and clubs, came from the chief priests and elders of the people. Now his betrayer had given them a sign, saying, Whomever I kiss is he the one sees him. Immediately he went up to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. But Jesus said to him, What? Friend, why have you come? Then they came and laid hands on Jesus and took him. And suddenly one of those who was with Jesus stretched out his hand, drew his sword, struck the servant of the high priest, and cut his ear off. But Jesus said to him, Put your sword in its place, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Or do you not think that I cannot now pray to my Father and he will provide me with more than 12 legions of angels? How then could the scripture be fulfilled that it must happen thus? As Jesus was bending over, picking up the dude's ear and slapping it back on his head. The important part here is that he said something. He said, I could pray to my father and that he would send me 12 legions of angels. As being royal, there's at least a legion of angels assigned to you. That's about 2,000 of them. There's a guardian angel assigned to you. And one of these angels can kill 185,000 people. So what's the problem? <laughs> the problem is not keeping that a reality. I used to walk at night. After my visit, I would walk. I mean, the dog would walk. It was just me and my... 80-pound over my dog that was there with my visitation with the Lord, and she started fighting the serpent that came out of me. She died twice on me. I laid hands on her, and she came back. Then I asked the Lord, please keep her alive until my wife was restored. And she stayed alive a year after my wife was, came back. But in that period of time, I used to walk, and I can tell you, I can sense the angels walking with me. We used to walk at night, walking down the street, and there was no fear whatsoever. I could sense them walking with me, and they'd all be around, and we'd be walking, me and the dog, and i get ready to go into my house, and I said, you know, there's something unfair about this whole ordeal, and I knew they were looking at me. I said, I have to open the door. But there was a reality of them always being with me. See, one time when I was B.C. and I was getting high in my bathroom, two angels appeared. And they were up in the corner. And they began to speak to one another. Obviously, God was getting ready to do something. And they said to one another, Look what he's doing to himself. That room my high. I was like, what? 
I'm like, and I could sense them. And I sensed them with long robes. It was almost like I could see them. Because, you know, when you're that gone, you go into a whole nother realm. And you can see all kinds of things. I'm telling you, you can hear doors shut at the airport. And it tore me up. And it was such a reality to me. Look at what he's doing to himself. You know, those weren't demons talking to one another because they were out promoting what I was doing to myself. But now that we are of a royal family, we have angels working on our behalf. And you've been assigned at least 2,000 angels. And they're always working on your behalf and trying. Every time you make a decision one way, they got to, oh, that's why they got to change sneakers every other week. <laughs> they got warehouses of everything. And they're always, they're always, every time you make a decision, they got to readjust everything. That's why it's so important to stay in divine order so everything can come to pass. But when we change positions and whatever, they got to reshift everything. I remember one day the Lord was saying to me, you know, you made another choice now. I've got to rearrange everything. Or he was telling me about somebody else. And he was explaining to me, every time you make a decision that's not approved by me, I got to rearrange everything to try and get you back in the position. And people are wondering why, well, gosh, Lord, what takes you so long for answer me? Because people are making up and down all over the place. The angels are running into each other. Again, a legion is about 2,000 angels accompanying us, arranging our destiny at every step you take and every decision you make. Psalm 34. Why? Because we're royalty now. Psalm 34. Oh, happy day. Oh. Yow! Verse 4. Psalm 34, verse 4. Is everybody there? I sought the Lord and he heard me. And he delivered me from all of my fears, anxieties, stresses insecurities, bondages, and dumb decisions. They looked to him and were radiant, and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried out, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of what? All of his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps all around those who what? Fear him and does what? Delivers him. Hello? That's your guardian angel. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blesses the man who trusts in him. Oh, fear the Lord, you his saints. There is no want or lack to those who reverence, honor, and respect him. You won't lack anything. Everything's going to fall into place if you just stay in divine position and quit entangling up the angels. The young lions lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. See, God says, I daily load you with benefits. But the benefits are released according to our cooperation. So they're all there. Everything is available every single day. You know, one of the things that we've got to come to in arena is to be faithful. Amen? We must be consistent. 
And we must labor unto the Lord, not unto ourselves. We labor unto Him. The angel of the Lord is your guardian angel. Again, he's able to kill 185,000 people. In Psalm 91, why do you have angels around you? Because you are royal. Psalm 91 and verse 9. It says, Because you made the Lord who is your refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you. Hello. Nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all of your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall what? Tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent. You shall trample underfoot. That's dominion and authority. Everybody got it? Oh, yes. He gives his angels charge over us. Again, the world imitates royalty, but the only thing they got around them is demons. Because we are, the world imitates royalty and royal families. They are the seed of serpent, Nimrod, and giants. That's where Pharaoh was in place. Again, the British family, even the Pope thinks he's royalty. Pope on a rope. <laughs> they were selling soap that had the Pope on a rope. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> These are all temporary pretenders with money, wealth, position, dominion, authority of a temporary realm. Well, you know what? You and I have both. We have dominion in the spirit realm and in the physical realm. Oh, hallelujah. Why? Because royalty represents position. We are blessed with every spiritual blessing and seated in heavenly places. That's royalty. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Royalty, loyalty, and identity. So we must maintain loyalty, right? We must maintain them all. Anyone breaches, they all ripple effect. It's just like the formula of victory, deny yourself, pick up the cross, and follow. You can't deny yourself. <laughs> You're not going to fight. 2 Timothy 2, chapter 1, or uh, chapter 2, verse 1. You therefore, my son and daughters, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus, and the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to who? Faithful. Faithful. Is a faithful person or a loyal person? Yes. Faithful men and women who will be able to teach others also. You therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. Again, strong in the plan of destiny as a faithful servant or what you call a loyal servant. There's a lot of people out there that are royalty but not loyal. Eventually, they'll be thrown out of the family. They, they will be disinherited in the physical realm. Matthew 24.
2445. Loyalty is considered called faithful. And you can't be loyal without a pure heart. Amen? It's a loyal heart. In verse 45, Then Jesus will, an answer, will answer them saying, Surely I say to you, and it's... Uh, yeah. Uh, who then is a faithful and wise servant? <laughs> Snap. Whom his master made ruler over his household to give them food in due season. Blessed is that servant whom his master, when he comes, will find him what? Doing because he's faithful, loyal. Assuredly, I say to you that he will make him ruler over all of his goods. But if that evil servant says in his heart, ah, where's it going to change? The heart. Remember, loyalty is associated with a pure heart. But if that evil servant says in his heart, my master's delaying his coming and begins to beat his fellow servants and eat and drink with the drunkards, the master of that servant will come in a day when he is not looking for him and in an hour that he is not aware of and will cut him in two, appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So there is danger of not being faithful or not being loyal. A faithful servant is a loyal servant. In Hebrews chapter 3. A faithful servant is a loyal servant. Royalty, loyalty, and identity. And such a time as this, so needed. In verse 1, Therefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our confession, Christ Jesus, who was faithful to him, who appointed him as Moses also was faithful in all of his house. For this one has been counted worthy of more glory than Moses inasmuch as he was, who built the house has more honor than the house. For every house is built by someone, but he who built all things is God. And Moses indeed was faithful in all his house as a servant for a testimony of those things which would be spoken afterward. But Christ as a son over his own house, whose house we are if we hold fast, the confidence and rejoicing of hope firm to the what? To the end. Again. Faithful over all of the house of God as loyal stewards. See, that's why whatever is associated with the kingdom, God is looking for stewards and how they take care of it, what they do with it. All of that is stewardship. He says, if you can't handle the little part of, how can I give you more? In 1 Corinthians 4. First Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1. Is everybody there? Hallelujah. A faithful servant is a loyal servant. We are stewards, aren't we? 
Let's speak it. Lest a man so consider us as servants of Christ and what? Stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required and stewards that one be found what? Faithful and loyal. But with me, it is a very small thing that I should be judged by you or by a human court. In fact, I don't even judge myself. For I know of nothing against myself, yet I am not justified by this. But he who judges me is the Lord. Therefore judge nothing before the time until the Lord comes, who will both bring to light hidden things of darkness and reveal the counsels of the hearts. Then each one's praise will come from God. Powerful. Faithful stewards, loyal and trustworthy. Loyal and what? Trustworthy. Royalty is a position. Loyalty is a heart. Identity is a destiny. 2 Timothy 2. In verse 21. Royalty, loyalty, gotta be. <laughs> Veggie tails. <laughs> Veggie tails. <laughs> Come on, you don't know Veggie Tales? Oh. Is everybody there? Yeah. 2 Timothy 2.21. <laughs> Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, he will be a vessel of honor, sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. Flee also youthful lusts, but pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace with those who call on the Lord out of a what? Pure heart. Those who are loyal. You don't want to hang around those who are not loyal. They're not faithful. But avoid foolish and ignorant disputes, knowing that they generate strife. And a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all, able to teach, patient in humility. Correcting those who are in opposition, if God perhaps will grant them repentance, so that they can get reconnected to the royal family again. So that they may know the truth. And that they may come to their senses and escape the snare of the devil, having been taken captive by them, by him to do his will. Now, God warned us that many will fall from the faith by deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons in the latter days. They will begin to fall from the faith as breaking covenant. Amen? They'll be no longer loyal. They'll be unloyal. They won't be consistent. They'll be breaking covenant with the eternal royal family. In Romans chapter 8, verse 28. Romans 8, 28. So you definitely want to hang with those that have a pure heart, that are loyal and faithful. Romans 8, 28, is everybody there? Let's speak it together. And we know that all things work to the good for, to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be what? Conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. That's a part of your identity. Moreover, whom he predestined, these he also called. Whom he called, these he also justified. And whom he justified, these he also what? Glorified. 
What then shall we say these things? If God is for us, what? Who can be against us? Hmm. We, you and I, were predestined to be conforming to his image. That is a part of your destiny. Royalty, loyalty, and identity. Amen? Your identity is to be in his image, isn't it? We're to imitate him. Paul said, imitate me as I imitate Christ. That's a part of your destiny. What? To fulfill in being conformed into his image. Why? So you can infiltrate the world system. Does everybody get it? Because you're going to infiltrate the world system in Christ connected to a royal family as a faithful servant unto God. Because your heart is pure. You're loyal, you're faithful, you're trustworthy. In Hebrews 6, you and I are predestined. It's our identity and destiny to be conformed into his image. The psalmist said, I, 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 will, I can't wait till I awaken in your likeness. Hebrew. <clears throat> Hebrew 6. You know, you hear such a battle right now of the elites, the deep state. See, they believe they are part of a royal family. Does everybody understand that? They're globalists. They believe that they are called as a gift to God. That's the difference. That's why abortion is okay. What then? Does everybody get it? That's why same-sex marriage is okay with them. And then they have strange ritual beliefs. They drink blood. And they believe that that maintains youth. They torture children. They get them to a place where torture releases an adrenaline. And when they torture children before they kill them, they get their blood because an adrenaline is released and they believe that by drinking this blood while the adrenaline is released, it, it maintains their youth and strength. Is that sick? That's real. That's reality. That is the royal kingdom of this earth ruled by Satan. That's how they live. Sounds strange, but that's what's happening. That's why over 300,000 children alone in the United States are missing every year. 1.3 million globally. But they're going to get busted soon. Hallelujah. Hebrews 6, is everybody there? In verse 1, Therefore, leaving the discussion of elementary principles of Christ, let us go on to what? Perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God, of doctrines of baptisms and laying on of hands, of resurrection of the dead and eternal judgment. And this we will do if God permits. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted the heavenly gift, and have become partakers of the Holy Spirit, and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the age to come, if they fall away to renew them again to repentance. It's in, almost in difficult for me and you to do that. Only God can do that. Does everybody get it? Since they crucify again for themselves the Son of God and put him to an open shame, 
For the earth which drinks in the rain that often comes upon it and bears herbs useful for those by whom it is cultivated receives blessing from God. But if it bears thorns and briars, it is rejected and near to being cursed, whose end is to be burned. But beloved, we are confident of better things concerning you, yes, things that accompany salvation, though we speak in this manner. For God is not unjust to forget your work and labor of love, which you have shown toward his name, and that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. And we desire that each one of you show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope until the end, that you do not become what? Sluggish, but imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promises of God. 1 Peter chapter 5. Royalty, loyalty, identity, gotta be. <laughs> Vegetables. Woohoo! First Pete, chapter five, verse six. Therefore what? Therefore what? Humble. Humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time and not you exalt yourself. Casting your, all your care upon him for he cares for you. There's a place of exchange. But be sober, be alert, be vigilant, be consistent. Because the adversary of the devil walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. In other words, he's going to try and deceive you, mess with your head. It says, resist them steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world, so you're not the only one going through what you're going through. Hello. Why me? Why not? <laughs> Verse 10, but may the God of all grace after you who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus after you have what? Suffered. <laughs> suffered. Everyone say suffered. 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 Everyone say I love to suffer. Oh, not all of you said it now, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Will you not suffer for Christ? Amen. That's good. Half of you, anyways. <laughs> After you have suffered a while, perfect. How many of y'all want to be perfected? Then you can't skip suffering. How many of y'all want to be established? Amen. Then you can't skip suffering. How many of y'all want to be strengthened? Amen. Then you can't skip suffering. Amen. How many of y'all love suffering? Amen. <laughs> <laughs> How many of y'all want to settle? Amen. Then you can't skip suffering. It's a part of your training for reigning. Welcome to the suffering club. <laughs> but may the God of all grace who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus after you have suffered a while. A while. Check that out. <laughs> you thought you were just going to stub your toe and it was over with. Uh-uh. Welcome to the potter's wheel. <laughs> Praise God. And after you suffer, perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you in Christ so you are immovable. 
So you maintain royalty, loyalty, and identity. Everybody cool? All right, one more scripture. It's Genesis 1 to Revelation 22. <laughs> <laughs> First John chapter five. <laughs>Try to skip out on that suffering stuff, man. Is everybody there? We know that whoever is born of God does not sin, but he who has been born of God keeps himself, and the wicked one does not touch him. We know that we are of God, and the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. And we know that the Son of God has come and given us an understanding that we may know him who is true, and we are in him who is true, in his son Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Little children, keep yourselves from idols of the world so you don't get disconnected, so that you maintain royalty, loyalty, and identity all the way home. Amen? Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. I pray tonight, Lord, that your word be protected by the blood, sealed by the anointing, that it will grow and bear fruit for your glory, and the enemy will not steal it and touch it, and that true identity will constantly be established so that we may fulfill the destiny that you've predestined for us as royally positioned, with a loyal and pure heart. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Praise God. Be blessed and stay dressed with the glory.